H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So for the benefit of uh, those who joined just now, I was about to say that uh, we just uh, we just covered on Hello World C-Sharp program, structure of C-Sharp program and compiling and executing C-Sharp without Visual Studio and uh, we also covered on data types in C-Sharp, operators in C-Sharp uh, and also we saw uh, number system and memory units and then we discussed on .NET Framework overview and uh, how to check whether the .NET Framework is installed or not and also we saw um, we saw .NET Framework class library so we saw that inside version 4.0 there are so many D so many uh, DLL files like system, system.io, system.web, system.net those are all .NET Framework class library and then um, and then today we'll be focusing on control structures in C Sharp and also we'll be seeing on what is uh, what are the types of variables we have uh, that is value types and reference type so so we are going to discuss on, on that as well so let's get started with uh, so one simple control structure which we saw yesterday is uh, uh, pre I mean which you saw in the previous class is if condition so if the condition is true the statements inside that will be executed and if the condition is false the statements uh, inside if condition will not be executed so so let so from now on i'll be using visual studio so hope all of you have installed visual studio so i have sent an inter um, in i have sent a mail to uh, install visual studio trial edition or you can even try for express edition so i'll be using visual studio 2013 so file exit so i'll i'll, I'll open again so till yesterday like we are uh, we are using a notepad uh, and how to compile notepad we are using till the previous class and now we'll start using visual studio so i'm going to start visual studio all programs microsoft visual studio 2013 so i'm going to use 2013 and i can start so for this course if you have visual studio 2008 or above that will do so don't worry if you don't have Visual Studio 2013, even that should be fine. So now I'm going to click on File, New Project, File, New Project, and then I'm going to select, I'm going to select Visual Studio uh, C Sharp. So I repeat again for the benefit of, uh, I repeat again, File, New Project, I'm going to select Visual C Sharp. So you see here, you can see here we have Visual Basic, Visual C Sharp, Visual C++, Visual F Sharp. So I'm going to select Visual C Sharp, which is the one uh, primarily, uh, uh, primarily 90% of the applications uh, in .NET will be using Visual C Sharp now. The reason why people go for Visual C Sharp is um, the syntax uh, or the format of uh, control structures, etc. Everything will be same like how we have C language or C++ or how we have Java. So almost the constructs uh, remain the same. So I'm going to select Visual C Sharp here and then I'm going to select console application. So so we have different types of applications uh, here. So we'll be selecting console application. So, so before that, uh, let's learn what are the types of applications we can create using .NET. So, so now first let me open a notepad. So the first type of application which we can create is a console application. So console application will have uh, will have a, uh, uh, the screen how we used to see like uh, the black screen will be there where we'll ask user to enter some inputs or or uh, which can perform like adding two numbers or multiplying two numbers like that. So we'll have a uh, dark black screen. So that is a console application. Uh, and then we can actually do a Windows application. So uh, Windows applications. Windows applications are something like, for example, if you see here, Windows R calculator. So this is a Windows application. So once you complete the course, you can even create an application like this using using uh, uh, using .NET. 
Even though our primary focus is on ASP.NET web applications, I'll be giving some idea on how to create some basic uh, Windows applications. Okay, so primarily our key area is uh, to learn how to design websites and uh, and how to, how to actually uh, start designing web web applications. So so using .NET, you can create console application, which is a black screen will be there, and uh, you can also develop Windows applications. And the main focus for our course, you can develop web applications. So web applications is something like where you will enter a URL. For example, uh, you will be entering www.microsoft.com uh, or google.com. So all these websites are called web applications or sometimes we can we will we even call as website. Okay, so, so using .NET, you can even develop websites. And even um, we have a technology called WPF, WPF or Silverlight. So using which uh, using which you can actually develop a rich internet applications or rich uh, Windows applications. So 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 for example, rich applications, rich in the sense uh, the UI will be too good. I mean uh, you'll have a lot of a uh, lot of uh, UI controls. Uh, which we cannot achieve in web application. So you we can achieve using w WPF Windows Presentation Foundation or Silverlight. Okay, and then we can we can even develop web services. So I'll tell what is a web service. So so using .NET you can even develop web service. So what is web services? So let me ask a quick question. So do you know um, what are the applications? Uh, what are the websites where we can see cricket score? Online cricket score. Anyone? I mean, I see all girls here, so I'm not sure how many of you see uh, cricket actually. So, any idea on what are the websites? Uh, what What are the websites we have for seeing cricket scores online? Okay, I got a I got a first response from Bobby. Yeah, cricket info. I want to see some responses. So, Bobby cricket score. Yeah, Seema cricket info. Other than cricket info. Any other websites which you are aware of? I want to see cricket score online. So, what are the websites we have? ESPN. Okay, I'm not asking about channels. Uh, okay, ESPN also we have website. So, any idea? Jesse, do you have any idea about cricket? Um, how do we see cricket scores online? Any websites? Cricket info, ESPN. I want the third one. If someone tells the third one, I'll 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 continue. Any website, you web website address where we can see cricket score online. Yeah, yeah, Bavik. Yeah, you're right. So, for example, uh, yeah, yeah. So, Sanjay quickly googled it. Okay. So now, uh, let me tell some examples. We have Crick Info. Anyway, uh, Crick Info, and then we have uh, ESPN, and then we have uh, Yahoo also and uh, and also click buzz like that we have different websites so it doesn't mean that all these websites all these websites will be watching cricket in the ground and then they are updating no they are not doing that so 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 it is not necessary that the websites which ever display a score in the internet not necessarily that someone from from their website will be watching cricket in the ground and then uh, do you think he is updating live not necessarily so what happens is they will have a tie up with with uh, with a company for example uh, they will have a type with a company which that company will be sharing um, will be sharing them the api api or or web service so that we call it as it will not have any ui but they will be giving some api which uh, which all the companies can access so that they will get live score so that we call it as web service web service is something like an api application programming interface or or is something like uh, something like a reusability feature which can be used across applications so anyway we'll see this later uh, web service so for now keep in mind uh, using visual studio we can develop uh, console application we can develop windows applications uh, we can develop web applications or websites and wpf is advanced version of uh, i mean is advanced version of windows applications and Silverlight is the next generation. I mean, Silverlight actually is, uh, was uh, started uh, by Microsoft, keeping in mind that uh, to develop rich, inter rich internet applications, 
but slowly what happened was like uh, as html5 is coming up um, the importance for silverlight has not that much uh, which microsoft has predicted so html5 uh, which is currently in um, currently in development by all the browsers so so we have a website called html5 test for example um, for example html5test.com so anyway um, we will not be dealing with html5 in this course but anyway i'll just give you some idea on what is html5 so if you see here uh, currently i'm using the browser google chrome so html5 is all about adding new tags to html so my current browser google chrome supports 505 points out of 555 points so that means google chrome is still in development uh, is still trying to upgrade their version so that it will support completely html5 so for example uh, in html5 they have added uh, some uh, tags like video tag or or they have added a lot of new tags for example input type equal to uh, let me give some simple example so input type equal to date date time which is not there which is not there in html4 so when you give input type equal to date so see now uh, let me let me uh, give some more example so new folder so html so so if i give new text document and i'm giving one dot html and then right click on this open with notepad and i'm giving here i'm giving here date colon input type is equal to date and the name is equal to some name i'm giving anyway we'll discuss on html uh, as a part of this course but we'll not discuss on html5 html5 is a separate course uh, okay so let me save it and then click on open okay so it's opening now so you can see that uh, in in IE, so in Internet Explorer, I'm I'm seeing like this. I'm seeing like a text box. So let me copy this and open the same in Google Chrome and see how it works. So now if I if I paste it in Google Chrome, see how it is. So how is it? So if I want to select a date, uh, I can simply select this. So this type of feature. So if I want to select, uh, if I want to go back and select any other year, so I can quickly go back and select whatever I want. So this is a new feature which they added in HTML5. Input type is equal to date, which is currently uh, which is currently supported by. So is is Google Chrome supporting it? You can see a tick mark here if the current browser supports. So let me take the same thing and paste it in in Internet Explorer and see whether that uh, that works or not. So let me paste it here. So how many marks my Internet Explorer is getting for HTML5? I'm getting 331 that means Internet Explorer uh, which I'm using uh, I'm using IE10 I, IE10 only supports uh, supports 331 points out of 555 points so uh, let's see here input type equal to date it is not supporting that is the reason why uh, that is the reason why I'm getting I'm getting it like a text box but whereas in Google Chrome it supports input type equal to date so Google Chrome supports most of the features except the input type date time which they are currently under development but but if you see in ie 10 internet explorer 10 it, it is not supporting most of these are you getting what i mean to say uh, all of you yeah so okay so if i ask you a question html5 is best supported by which browser ie 10 or google chrome right right okay so so w after coming the, i mean html5 the plan was by the end of 2014 all the browsers should support html5 so html5 uh, the standards are provided by world wide web consortium so we have uh, we have a standards uh, company which which is uh, uh, which is w3c so w3c w3c is the one which gives standards for all the websites so as long as, as soon as they add a new tag for example world wide web consortium or w3c.org so what it will do is it will add a new tag for example input type is equal to date or input type equal to time it will add a new tag and it will tell the functionality what, it, what is expected to all the browsers 
and in the next version all the browsers sh should add that functionality into their browser okay that is the reason why browsers will be keep on releasing next version next version like that ie 10 ie 11 ie 10 update or google chrome 21 version 21 or like that so it will be keep on uh, adding so so now okay anyway uh, that's apart from okay so what why we went here is uh, i was discussing like silverlight on silverlight silverlight is used for developing rich internet applications rich internet applications okay so now okay so these are these are some of the applications which can be developed using dotnet there are a lot more which we, which we can develop we have uh, okay so i repeat console application windows application web application uh, WPF for Silverlight rich applications or we can also develop web service web service is something like reusable API which can be used across applications so which will not have user interface okay so WPF stands for Windows Presentation Foundation Windows Presentation Foundation okay yeah so now that's about some of the applications which we can develop and with this knowledge we'll go back to uh, our control structures okay so now i'm going to select uh, here i'm going to select console application okay so now i'm going to select console application click on okay the advantage of using uh, visual studio is uh, when you type in notepad you will not see the intellisense so you have to be very sure that you will type correctly even if you type uh, right line case sensitive or system small letters it will throw you error okay so but when you use visual studio intellisense will give you suggestions on how to actually for example see here when i when i'm creating a project so for example if i write console i can see that um, i can see here the drop down list so uh, i mean let me show you here so when I type uh, when I type console, I can see that here. I was about to take a print screen, but it's not coming. See now, uh, when I type console, when I started typing console, it is showing me intelligence. Console, do you want console or do you want console color, console key? or do you what do you want so it is suggesting so there is no way that i'll do some typing mistakes even if even if i'm using visual studio if i do some mistakes uh, it will not allow you it will it will give you a red line below that so so there are very very less chances unless the developer is uh, i mean i cannot say so otherwise you will you will uh, you cannot type any mistakes so so let me s let me try to console console dot see now when the moment i put dot it is showing all the methods so right line console dot right line i can select from it and then i can give here hello world okay so now if by mistake if i do anything wrong here for example by mistake if i put l small letter l small letter it will not allow me it will it will it will give a red line so by that i should understand that okay something went wrong here so so now ag again I need to put a dot here so that is the advantage of uh, using Visual Studio so Visual Studio IntelliSense will help you to create applications very quickly and you don't need to s you don't need to remember uh, whether right line W is capital or L is capital and nothing you don't need to remember anything everything is given to you by your Visual Studio Visual Studio okay now so that is the use of Visual Studio now if I want to compile this or so if I want to compile this, I can actually click on the start button. So so when I click on start button, see now I can click on this. It is getting executed. The moment it gets executed and it prints the output, it is getting disappeared very quickly. So it will display the output and it it's getting disappeared. So what I need to do is I need to add console dot read line. So console dot read line will will actually wait for something to me to enter from the user. See now when I run this, it will display the output and it's waiting for some input from me. It is waiting for some input from me because I have added console dot read line. So anyway, for now keep in mind, if we add console dot read line, it will wait for the user input. 
so I'll explain that later what is the use of console.read line so now until I press enter it will be, be there so I'm able to see the output okay so that is about now we'll try to understand uh, we'll try to understand first we'll see uh, we'll, we'll learn about if condition how to uh, how to add if condition so now yesterday we saw I mean the previous class we saw uh, how to check whether the number is even number or not so we wrote the code for it but but how we did was I declared like this int n is equal to 5 and then I'm writing here if n modulo 2 is equal to 0 if n modulo 2 is equal to 0 that means the number is divisible by 2 modulo 2 is the number is divisible by 2 here I'm writing console dot write line I'm giving here even number now I'll write here else console dot write line so if that modulo 2 is not 0 that means it is not divisible by 2 so console dot read console dot write line I need to give odd number okay so now inside if condition inside if condition if you have only one sentence if you have only one sentence you don't need to give flower brackets but if you have more than one sentence you have to if you have more than one expression you have to give you have to give like this you have to give a flower brackets I repeat again inside if condition or inside else if you have only one sentence here I mean one line here you don't need to give flower brackets but if you have more than one line you have to give flower, uh, flower brackets just to tell that these statements belongs to if condition okay but since we have only one condition uh, giving this brackets is optional okay so even if you can give it or you need not give it that is optional for one statement if you have so that is about uh, now if I run this you can see that the output is if I run this you can see that the output is odd number okay so now let me ask some question okay so let me ask a question on what is the value of what is the value of uh, 17 modulo 8 yeah you're right okay good so so now uh, so so for okay so now I have I have I got a question saying like uh, what is the use of creating our own namespace uh, we'll discuss that later so I'll tell uh, I'll tell that uh, later uh, how to create our own namespace and how to use it and all so now we'll discuss that um, after some time yeah maybe next class okay now this is about if condition so can someone tell me whether uh, zero is even number or odd number Can you tell me whether 0 is even number or odd number? No, the question is, is it even number or odd number? It's a whole number, I agree, but is it an even number or is it odd number? Okay, so yeah so it is neither even nor odd so now but what I'll get if I enter uh, if I put 0 here what will be the output now can you tell me what will be the output for this program if I put 0 n is equal to 0 can you tell me what will be the output what is the output will I get even or will I get odd number so I got I got uh, I got few responses I'm just looking for update from Jesse Bobby yeah so so now uh, if n is equal to 0 and 0 modulo 2 0 modulo 2 uh, we are checking for if 0 modulo 2 equal to 0 because what is the value for 0 modulo 2 0 modulo 2 what is the value yeah I'm getting response from yeah 0 modulo 2 is 0 that's why it will print it will print even number so 
so I don't want to do that so for the benefit of others I'm just explaining how what is 0 modulo 2 so you need to write like this 2 and you need to write here 0 and two zeros are 0 and the output is okay and the, and uh, I need to give I need to give this one reminder okay and 17 modulo 8 I need to write here 8 and 17 8 twos are 16 and I need to give this one one is a reminder okay so now so but I don't want um, I mean I don't want to print even number for 0 because 0 is not even number so what I need to do here is uh, first I'll check whether the number is 0 or not so I'll check whether the number is 0 or not so if n is equal to 0 I'm just printing here neither even nor odd and then what I'm doing here is uh, else if I'm going to add else if else if n modulo 2 is equal to 0 I'm going to print here even number and then else I'm going to print console dot uh, console dot right line odd number okay so this is how we can use uh, if we can use if condition if else if else if else if like we can write any number of else if statements until uh, so until uh, our requirement is completely satisfied so this is the use of uh, so this is the use of using uh, let me just remove so just remove this okay so if n is equal to 0 and then I, I have used else if and then I have used else so is it clear now first I'm checking for if n value is 0 if that value is 0 I'm writing neither even nor odd else if else if uh, n modulo to 0 I'm just printing even number else I'm printing odd number so is it clear how to use else if all of you yeah okay so so that is about using if else if and all so now let's discuss on what is a switch case okay so this is about if condition so now let's discuss on what is a switch case okay and before that we'll try to understand how to read a number from the keyboard how to read a number from the keyboard so now uh, now let me let me explain this way so so far we are not reading the values uh, okay let me run the program so can you guys tell me what is the output if I run this program what is the output now if I run this program all of you what is the what could be the output if I run this program yeah so let me run this yeah the output is neither even nor odd okay so now now let's let's try to understand how to read a number from the keyboard so far we are giving here we are assigning the value uh, while declaring so now let's try to learn uh, okay so now um, okay now I'll try to read the value from the user so int n okay so now I want to read the value from the so console dot read line so what is the return type of this console dot read line method so the return type you can see here when you are typing right so when you type here and put brackets so you can see here this is the return type okay so console dot read line will actually uh, the return type of this method is a string okay so anyway we'll discuss that later I mean uh, how to write our own methods and how to add return types and all but for now sorry for now let's assume that for console dot read line the return type is string okay but now I need to convert this to integer so if I write like this see now if I write like this n is equal to console dot write line console dot read line okay for example if I declare a string string name and I can write like this name is equal to console dot write line so I can I can write here console dot write line enter enter your name and then f 
followed by I can read a number name is equal to console dot read line and then I can display here console dot write line you entered I can give like this I mean whatever we're going to discuss now is important please focus here I'll anyway repeat uh, okay so this is how we normally read a value from the keyboard so first uh, I'm just telling the user to enter your name this is just to, to display this string in the console window enter your name after that what I'm doing whatever user enters I am so this is this line is the one which will which is used to read the value from the user so whatever user enters I am reading it and storing it in the variable name now here I'm just printing you entered name so let me run this so I'm going to enter Meghnath and I can see that you entered Meghnath okay so so now we we have to read using console.readLine and we have to store it in string so so the method read line the method read line when I move the mouse here you can see that the method read line will return a string and and what is the data type of this side we have so name is also string so both sides we have string so no problem so it will read the string and it will store in the name variable and this is important you have to print you entered zero you have to write like this flower bracket zero and then you have to put name so now what happens is in instead of this value this flower bracket zero this name will be replaced okay so instead of this z this flower bracket zero this name will be replaced so if you recollect your uh, good old programming in 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 C language, you used to you, to, you used to write like this: printf uh, printf answer is equal to percent d comma ans something like this. So in in place of this percent d, the value of answer will be replaced. So you will get answer is equal to five, answer is equal to ten like that. So similarly in C sharp, we will write like this: console dot write line answer is equal to will give flower brackets 0 and then ans like this will give so in in this place this answer will be replaced but if you have multiple parameters for example uh, yeah so there are some alternate ways also you don't I mean this is not the only way to give so even we can give like this so you can actually write like this you entered and you can actually give a uh, plus name even this is also perfect you can even give like this you entered Meghnath so if I run this it will I'm entering Meghnath you entered Meghnath so this is also perfectly fine so whatever you are comfortable you can write so I am comfortable this way so I normally write uh, I normally write like this you entered and I'll give here flower bracket 0 and I can give name so if you have two variables you need to write like this for example I want to print name two times so I can give like this and I can even I can write like this comma name okay so in that case what happens is in this zero place this will replace with this value and in this one place this will replace with this value okay so now now let's run this so I can see that if I'm entering Meghnath I'm saying you entered Meghnath and Meghnath okay so I got a question so let me tell you in C language in scanf so um, yeah uh, in 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 C sharp we don't have scanf uh, we have console dot read line so console dot read line uh, we don't need to put percent D or ampersand or something so in C sharp read line is different uh, different instead I mean different way to implement than C language so now so this is for if I want to read a string value what if I want to read a number what if I want to read a number so so now if I want to read a number int int age so if I want to read age so if I put enter your age now let's it comes a problem see now uh, I don't I don't want to read name here enter your age so now if I copy this you entered age so let me remove this let me remove this now what is the problem why I am getting this red line can you guess why I am getting this red line 
okay i got one response saying like data type mismatch so any other response since age is integer perfect yeah you're right so here age is an integer but what is the read line returning what is the data type of read line yeah read line return type is a string is a string so now age is integer and read line is a string so what is the uh, if i move the mouse here so i cannot i can see that i can see at the bottom saying like cannot implicitly convert string to integer so that is the reason why i'm getting an error so to correct that what i need to do is i need to convert this to integer i need to convert this to integer so to convert that what is the system name for age i mean what is the system name what is the system name for integer what is the system name for integer i saw one response what is the system name for int data type system dot int 32 system dot int 32 it is not int system dot int 32 i guess i guess i need to recollect okay questions to all of you what is the system name for what is the system name for long i'm not seeing from response from some of you yeah okay what is the system name for long data type it is not long 64 uh you need to recollect you need to recollect it is not long 64 yeah it is system dot int 64 it is not long 64 i saw a couple of responses saying long 64 Okay, so now what is the system type name for float? Yeah. So I got only two responses. All of you, please focus. Uh, I'm not getting today. I'm not getting a response from Jesse. Um, Jesse, I'm uh, Jesse and. Uh, Okay, so I want to see the response from Bavik, and uh, so Bobby, uh, it's not float thirty two. It is system dot single. We don't have float thirty uh, two. So if you have missed the class of data types, please refer the videos I have shared. Uh, I have shared with all of you. Uh, please refer the videos of day one and day two classes uh, I have shared with all of you. Okay, so data types play critical role. Uh, you should be knowing all the data types for sure. Otherwise, it might be difficult. Okay, so so now what I need to do is I need to convert the string to integer. So for that, I have a way. I I can do it using convert dot two int two int convert dot two int thirty two. Why I'm using two int thirty two? Because age is an integer. The system type is int thirty two. So I'm trying to convert the string to in thirty two, okay? So that is how I need to do. Okay, so this is how we normally need to convert. Okay, so all you need to do is convert dot to in thirty two, because age is. Uh, so if you have declared using short, so what is that I need to do here? Convert dot what I need to add if I'm using to in uh, to in what I need to write for short. What is the system type name for short? yeah so i got one response quickly all of you please respond so yeah i have to use 2 int 16 because short takes 2 bytes and which is 16 bits so i need to write here 2 int 16 okay this is how uh, this is how i need to convert a string to integer so let me run this code and see how it happens so enter your age i'm entering 29 years you can see that you enter 29 okay So this is how uh, this is how you have to read a value from the keyboard. This is how you have to read a value from the keyboard. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you a small project sort of thing, which you have to do it, and you have to ask uh, some of your family members to do that. Especially if you have kids of uh, five years or or six years. you can you can actually uh, i'm going to tell now a short quiz application which you have to do it and you have to ask some of your family members to take the quiz so please focus here we'll we'll be doing a small project which will give you h2k emphasis provided
provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.